Donald Stuck. Sir Topham Hat has reopened a branch line. It runs along the coast by sandy beaches and seaside towns till it meets the small railway at a port to which big ships come. As Duck had made friends with the small railway engines, Sir Topham Hat asked him to take charge. Your work in the art has been good, he said kindly. Would you like to have this branch line for your own? Yes, please, sir, said Duck. Very well, said Sir Topham Hat. I hope you will work hard and be a credit to me. Duck is very proud of his branch line and he works very hard. His two coaches... Alice and Mirabelle are painted in great western colours. They take passengers to the small railway. Duck also has some trucks in which he hauls away the ballast that the small engines bring down from their valley. The Sir Topham Hat uses this ballast for his railway. Duck cannot do all the work himself. So Donald and Douglas take turns to help him. Sir Topham Hat has built them a shed at the station by the small railway. Duck felt his responsibility deeply. He talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much Sir Topham Hat relies on me. Oh, hi, muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western and quack, quack, quack. What? Ye heard. Quack, quack, ye go. Sign ye an egg lid. Now wished and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Duck indignantly. He stayed awake wondering how to pay Donald out. At last he said to himself sleepily, I'll ask driver in the morning. He says I quack as if I'd laid an egg. Let's pay him out. Quack? Do you? His fireman pondered. I know, he said and whispered. Duck giggled and his driver slapped his leg in delight. Just right, he said. He dearly loved a joke. That night, when Donald was asleep, they popped something into his water tank. We've done it, they whispered to Duck. They won't hurt her, will they? asked Duck anxiously. Bless you, no. They're both kind men. She'll come to no harm. A duckling popped out of Donald's tank at the first water stop. Both driver and fireman goggled with surprise. But Donald laughed. Ne do e who's behind this, he said, and told them what had happened in the shed. The duckling was tame. She shared the driver's and fireman's sandwiches and rode in the tender, quacking at intervals. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. Presently, however, she hopped off at a station, and, as they couldn't wait to catch her, there she stayed. But before they reached home, Donald and his driver and fireman consulted together and made a plan. That night, Donald's driver and fireman got busy. When Duck's crew arrived to look him over in the morning, they found something which made them laugh until they cried. Look, Duck, they said. Look what was under your bunker. A next box with an egg in it. Duck peered at it unbelievingly. Donald opened a sleepy eye. Oh, you didn't say, he exclaimed. Do you mind what I said, Duck? Ye must have laid it this night. 
all unbeknownst. Then Duck laughed too. You win, Donald, he said. It take a clever engine to get the better of you. The duckling settled at the station and became a pet with passengers and staff. She carefully inspects all parcels and luggage and sees that the porters stow them properly in the vans. When she wants a swim, she flies to a nearby pond, but always returns to welcome the trains. She stands by the cab, quacking imperiously, till driver or fireman gives her something to eat. Donald is her favourite, and she sometimes allows him to give her rides, but always gets off at her own station. The station master calls her Dilly, but to everyone else, she is always... Donald's duck.